revolution going on in this country. And it's thanks to you. And now it's thanks to Tommy as well. He's woken up something. He's triggered something. And now we're out loud and proud of who we are. So why have we taken to the streets? Why do we give up our weekends with our loved ones? Because we're fed up with successive governments who have become deaf to ordinary people's voices. Whether it's their concerns about mainly Pakistani rape gangs, which was covered up for 20 years, or whether it's the jihadi-based terrorism that has been blowing up our children, our parents and our visitors. Terrorism that is imported and also homegrown. And our government's failure to deal with it. We're angry when they lock up Tommy. He's a political prisoner. Yet consider releasing the hate creature and Jen Chowdhury. What do we think of that? Scum! 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 The government takes us for fools. The number one priority for government is to keep us safe. And they have failed to keep us safe. Since I was elected in 2014, I've seen the European Union encourage Islamic migrants to come to Europe. <laughs> any other politician. I've been to the Greek camps, the southern Spanish border, and Morocco, and I sit on the EU committee that deals with terrorism. And my friends, we've not seen nothing yet. The EU has systematically failed to control its borders and protect its citizens. The migrants are slipping into the UK, day by day, by boats and vehicles, because we have failed to protect our borders because we've laid off the police, we've laid off the border force staff. It's because of so-called austerity in this country. They targeted the wrong people. We need to build up the police force again and build up our border force. But let's just think for a moment what those terrorist numbers mean. The EU and the UN reckon that 50,000 jihadis slipped through during the past two years of the migrant crisis. They reckon that the thousand jihadi brides that want to, turn, that want to come back to our countries with their offspring, they abandon us to go and fight for ISIS and their breeding factories. I say no, they gave up their rights to be British citizens. Caliphate. Why are they not in care? 8,000 have been referred to the PREVENT program, including 400 under 10s. More than 5,000 Europeans are fighting for ISIS at this moment. Over 500 have sneaked back into, this, into the UK. But guess how Christ. many have actually been prosecuted in the bank None. 14. Oh. And they're the one who must be known about. Jihadis are known to UK authorities. And this week, the EU stated that we now have the highest number of jihadi terrorists in any state of the EU. What a sorry state this country has come to. But when, when I talk with debates on the EU on these numbers, they refuse me. And Mrs May is refusing to have the debate. That's why we're here today. Instead, they tell Tommy for telling the truth. To look tough on terror, they ban young people who want to protect our culture and identity from entering Britain. Canadian and Commonwealth citizen Lauren Southern banned. Mm. US citizen Brittany Pettibone banned. Mm. Norwegian Tori Gramusen banned. Mm. Australian citizen Martin Solner banned. Why do they do this? To look tough. They use the Terrorism Act. These young people are not terrorists. These young people are also political prisoners. That's right. Tommy has support all across the world, and in particular in the EU. You've heard from my colleagues today. I'm the warm-up to Geert Wilders. He's the one that radicalised me when I got into the EU Parliament. <laughs> my colleagues this week from across Germany, France, the Netherlands and Belgium and Flanders all took 
part in a debate in a conference that I organised. We saw massive support for Tommy across the world from Denmark, Austria, Tel Aviv, New York, Austria, Australia, Brussels and Eric Trump. Yes. Tommy has even been offered That's political it. asylum in Germany and Australia. My, my colleagues across the EU were shocked that the UK, the bastion of democracy, of free speech and tolerance, has become a totalitarian state. To them, it's clear that every arm of the British state has been out to get Tommy ever since he emerged from the Islamic town of Luton some years ago. Friends, all of them declared that Tommy is a political prisoner and called for his release. Why is clear that Tommy is treated with greater suspicion and greater the guilt of any Islamic extremist or mass rapist has ever been. But where's the human rights industry? Because I tell you it's an industry. Where is Amnesty International? Where's the Human Rights Watch? Where's the UN? They're too busy defending the rights of criminals, migrant invaders, and terrorists.